Hello, dear students. In last yes. lecture, we have discussed about the different uh, methods of classification and how we can classify the microorganisms into different kingdom. So, in this lecture, we will discuss about the what are the different major characteristics which are used in the taxonomy so that we can place or we can identify that particular organism with respect to their different characteristics. So, here we will discuss one by one. The identification of an organism is the process of determining its species. So, uh, when we talk about the identification, we will use different methods with respect to their morphological characteristics, physiological characteristics, biochemical characteristics, and on that basis, we can place that particular organism into a particular group. So, by, by this way, we can reach up to the species level so that we can clearly identify that whether that organism is already reported or whether it is newly isolated organism and with respect to that we can particular uh, by following the uh, particular rules we can nomenclature we can complete the nomenclature of that particular organism and place into a particular group various characteristics of an organism are determined by appropriate observation and tests test and these are then compared with the published description of the various species for identification of microorganism, uh, we can carry out different methods or different uh, tests, or we can see uh, different characteristics we can analyze uh, in your laboratory so that we can reach a particular final conclusion so that that our organism belongs to a particular genus or a particular species. So what are the characteristics are used in the classification system? Uh, we will discuss one by one. So uh, when we uh, carried out the pro uh, proper uh, protocol for the identification process. We will go through the different uh, characteristics like we have to discuss about the what are the morphological characteristics of that particular organism, uh, what are their physiological characteristics or immunological characteristics. Again, we will uh, or we have to discuss about their metabolic uh, requirement or metabolic characteristics, the etiological, etiological characteristics, uh, their protein composition or we can see uh, with respect to their cell wall composition we can see also composition of nucleic acid what type of nucleic acid they contain <coughs> uh, their hybridization method nucleic acid sequencing with respect to section is rna sequencing uh -huh. uh, uh, by this method we can uh, conclude a particular that organism whether that belong to a uh, particular group or it is uh, be, uh, already reported or we can say we reach up to a species level so we'll discuss what are the morphological characteristics which are used in the classification of that particular organism? So here, determination of morphological feature usually require studying individual cells of pure culture. So when we talk about the morphological characteristics, the first requirement uh, for the morphological characteristics becomes we have to require or we require that particular organism in a uh, pure culture. The microorganisms are very small in size usually express in a micrometer. So when we talk about the bacteria, their size are ranges uh, or we can uh, measure in a micrometer. So when we talk about the morphological characteristics, uh, we need a particular uh, culture in a pure form. And uh, with respect to that, the size, shape and arrangement of the cells are determined by microscopic examination of the stain smear. So after isolating that organism in pure culture, we can carry out the different morphological uh, characterization of that particular organism with respect to the uh, size, shape, and arrangement of that uh, cell. And uh, by microscopic examination or by staining procedure, we can um, determine a particular organization or we can say arrangement of that particular cell. Uh, so uh, for that uh, size, shape, and arrangement uh, determination, we can use different staining um, um, method as well. So, examination of living organism in hanging drop preparation shows motility or when we categorizing organism into uh, gram positive or gram negative with respect to that, we have to stain that particular organism by following gram staining. You can see, uh, again, acid fast staining, we can also say uh, flagella staining. Okay. So, these are the different staining procedure we can uh, use for the uh, proper identification of that organism or to study the morphological characteristics of that organism. 
apart from that to determine whether that organism is motile or not we carried out the process or the follow of the process of hanging drop preparation or we can say hanging drop method to determine the motility of that organism organism of, are differentiated on the basis of various staining staining techniques like frequently used staining methods are uh, gram staining on that basis we can uh, differentiate organism into whether they are gram positive or gram negative in which the cell wall composition uh, differentiated organism into two groups gram positive and gram negative acid fast staining flagella staining capsule stain uh, spore staining and negative staining these are the different staining uh, method we use for the differentiating that organism from one another the gram staining is of great value because organize organisms are classified as gram positive or gram negative uh, on by on the basis of that gram staining uh, procedure the staining reactions however vary with the composition of the medium condition of growth and the age of the culture so these are the different affecting factor on which uh, our result may be vary so depending on the uh, composition of that uh, organism uh, that result can be uh, we can observe with respect to that we can differentiate that organism into uh, different groups now when we stain the uh, organism we can observe that organism under microscope with respect to that we can determine or we can observe the shapes of bacteria so bacteria have different shapes like cocci bacilli vibrio shape spirilla shape filamentous or mycoplasma these are nothing but the uh, different shapes of bacteria we can uh, see under microscope so what do you mean by cocci when we observe the uh, bacterial cell uh, they are small in shape spherical in uh, shape or oval in shape uh, so that that bacterial cell uh, we can call as that and nothing but the cocci shape of that particular organism and for example on the cocci shape we can observe uh, like micropocus type of uh, bacterial cell we wish to and, and we can observe under microscope so micropocus can observe in a cocci shape uh, always another shape is nothing but the bacilli or we can also say uh, call it as nothing but the rod shape these are rod shape bacteria and for example uh, rod shape bacteria is uh, we are taken nothing but the bacillus or the genus bacillus are nothing but the all are rod shape bacteria vibrio it is again another shape of bacteria or in the slide we can see it is nothing but the comma shape of that particular bacteria they are comma shape or we can say curved rod uh, to that particular organism and the example of uh, uh, comma shape bacteria or vibrio uh, organism are nothing but the vibrio pollinary so on the basis of their uh, shape we can differentiate that organism from one another one to another spirilla it is nothing but the another shape of bacteria they are longer rods they are long from that of the uh, rod shape of bacteria that we have discussed in bacillus shape they are longer rods with several curves or coils helical in shape for example triponema pallidum a quasi agent of uh, syphilis is a, a spirillum uh, shape of bacteria or you can say this uh, shape we can observe under microscope filamentous type of uh, filamentous shape of bacteria we can also observe they are branch like filamentous bacteria like in case of uh, actinomycetes we can see that type of uh, structure mycoplasma cell wall is absent in this bacteria as micro when we uh, discuss about the mycoplasma normally in their characteristics we can see they are cell wall lacking organism uh means <laughs> do not possess a stable morphology they occurs round or oval in shape so uh, the shape of that particular organism with respect to that so on these uh, different shapes we can differentiate uh, that organism into uh, different groups now after when we observe the shape of bacteria we can also see the proper arrangement pattern of that particular bacteria as bacteria follows this special arrangement pattern and on that basis we can differentiate organism or we can say bacteria into different groups bacteria are typical or the bacteria have a typical arrangement pattern uh, their reproduction or they reproduce by means of binary fission and split into a uh, form in new cells so in uh, next lecture we will also discuss about the what is meant by the binary fission and bacteria are normally carried out the process of binary fission or replicate by means of reproduce by means of binary fission so 
uh, apart from that they also follow the continuously proper uh, pattern of arrangement so when we see uh, a diplococci type of uh, diplococci shape they are split along one plane and found arranged into pairs so uh, see, uh, if we see if two cells are arranged into uh, attached with one another we can call it's nothing but the diplococcus type of organism for example that type of arrangement we can see in case of diplococcus pneumoniae streptococci the strepto is nothing but the eating nothing but the arranged in a chain so they divide on one plane and remain attached to form a chain so this type of arrangement we can see in case of streptococcus lactis so it is again another type of arrangement of bacteria as we can we have seen in case of size of uh, shape of bacteria apart from that bacteria also follow the proper arrangement pattern tetracoccae they are divided into two plane and live into uh, group of four so uh, tetra is nothing but the four and if we see that particular bacteria into group of four we can call it as nothing but the tetracoccae staphylococci is nothing but the they divide in three plane with respect to binary fission how they follow the uh, splitting uh, uh, around the plane with respect to that bacteria arrange uh, into diplococci streptococci tetracoccus staphylococci uh, in case of staphylococci they divide in three plane in irregular pattern looks and they look like a bunch of grapes as we see uh, the uh, bunch of grapes uh, i like that that type of arrangement we can see uh, for the staphylococcus aureus so with respect to that we can uh, identify the particular organism uh, their shapes and arrangement pattern sarsina is uh, again a divide in irregular pattern and produce cubical arrangement of group of eight cells so if we observe that type of uh, arrangement of bacteria we can say they are nothing but the sarsina <coughs> Well, in case of bacilli, they split only across their short axis and group as a diplobacilli. For example, Klebsiella pneumoniae, streptobacilli, example of bacillus subtilis, these are nothing but the, um, they split uh, across their short axis. So with respect to that, their arrangement, they are uh, uh, differentiated into uh, different groups. So here in this diagram, we can see a arrangement pattern of uh, bacterial cell in case of arrangement of cocci, if a single cocci we can form, it is nothing but the single, you can say cocci shape of bacteria. If that cocci are in a uh, group of two, we can say it is nothing but the diplococci, it has nothing but the tetra or tetracoci, you can say it is nothing but the sarsena type of uh, arrangement of bacterial cell, it is nothing but the staphylococcus type of arrangement cell, it is nothing but the streptococci. So if the cocci are arranged in a chain, we can say it is nothing but the Streptococci. With respect to the uh, uh, plane of um, uh, reproduction, or you can say with respect to binary fission, they are uh, arranged into a particular manner. When we discuss about the arrangement of bacillus shape, single bacterial cell or rod shape bacterial can say it is nothing but the bacillus. When they found in two uh, group of two cells, we can say it is nothing but the diplo uh, bacilli. And if we found that bacteria into a chains, we can call it as a streptobacilli, it is nothing but the palisade type of uh, arrangement of bacterial cell, and it is nothing but the cocobacilli. Uh, in case of spirochete, spiral shape arrangement, you can see it is nothing but the spirilla, viral, uh, helical shape, or corkscrew form, and it is nothing but the vibrio, vibrio type of arrangement. So, uh, each and every bacterial uh, cell follow a particular shape and having a particular arrangement pattern. So, by using that, we can differentiate the organism into different groups. So now, uh, apart from the size and shape, bacteria also have a particular uh, flagella arrangement pattern. So with respect to that, uh, if we follow the uh, flagella staining, we can carry it out, or by hanging drop method, we can de uh, determine whether they are motile or not. After that, we can stain for the flagella, and if we found a particular arrangement of flagella on a bacterial cell, we can count if the flagella, single flagella is present at the one end of that bacterial cell, it is nothing but the monotrichous type of flagella. If we found more than uh, one flagella at a particular one end of the bacterial cell, we can call it as nothing but the uh, low flow trichous flagella. Apart from that, 
if we found a single or multiple flagella present on both the end of the bacterial cell, we can call it as nothing but the amphitrichous uh, flagella or amphitrichous uh, arrangement of flagella. If we found a multiple uh, flagella present around the cell, uh, we can call it as nothing but the peritrichous type of flagella. So with respect to the arrangement of flagella, we can differentiate bacteria into different groups. Uh, now we will talk about the uh, pattern of endospore or we can say uh, spore uh, arrangement of bacterial cell. All our bacteria are not spore formal, but uh, when we found the spore forming bacteria, the uh, bacteria also follow a proper arrangement with respect to the uh, endospore pattern. So <clears throat> if the uh, spore is present uh, in blue color, we can see it is nothing but the parent cell. And at the center, there is a uh, spore we can see. And if that present that endospore at the center of the cell, it we call it as a, nothing but the central endospore. If we found that uh, endospore present uh, somewhat uh, towards the uh, end of the bacterial cell, we call it as a, the subterminal endospore. And in case of <clears throat> that endospore present at the particular end of any one end of the bacterial cell, we can we can call it as nothing but the terminal endospore. So these are nothing but the uh, different uh, flagella arrangement, bacterial cell and shape. Uh, we can see when we observe that particular microscope uh, by bacterial cell under microscope and if, if you follow uh, the proper staining protocol for the bacterial cell. So by using that, we can uh, differentiate the bacterial cell into uh, different group on the basis of their uh, staining pattern. So it is all about the morphological characteristics of bacterial cell uh, and other characteristics with respect to biochemical characteristics we will discuss in next lecture.